everyone, Steve Malloy here. I like Robert Kennedy Jr. I had the privilege of meeting him last year. I'm glad that he has decided to support should-be President Trump because they agree on really important issues like government and media corruption. That said, Kennedy is using his new platform to discuss some of his less factually based ideas. Recently, for example, he discussed so-called endocrine disruptors with Tucker Carlson. The link to that discussion is in this post. I just want to take the next couple of minutes to remind everyone of the junk science behind the notion of endocrine disruptors. 30 years ago, radical greens introduced the concept of endocrine disruptors or environmental estrogens in order to scare the public about chemicals in the environment. They claimed that even low-level exposures to chemicals could alter hormone systems to cause everything from infertility, think lower sperm counts, to attention deficit order to autism to the feminization of males to cancer and more. If you've ever seen plastic bottles labeled BPA-free, that labeling is part of the endocrine disruptor scare. I've been debunking these claims since they were first trumpeted in the major media in 1996. I have an extensive discussion of the endocrine disruptor scare on JunkScience.com. It's linked to in this post. Today, I want to briefly hit three main points with the endocrine disruptor scare. First, when the endocrine disruptor scare broke in the mainstream media in 1996, it centered on a study published in the prestigious journal Science. The study reported that combinations of pesticides were 1,500 times more potent as endocrine disruptors than exposure to the pesticides individually. But the study was subsequently retracted from publication because the researchers were found to have committed scientific misconduct. They had just made up their study results. Science fraud was not an auspicious start. Second, the endocrine disruptor scare violates the basic law of toxicology, that is, the dose makes the poison. Any substance can be toxic at a high enough level of exposure. Any substance can be harmless at a sufficiently low exposure. It's all a matter of dose. But the endocrine disruptor hoaxers tried to turn toxicology upside down by claims that any exposure to chemicals could cause harm. This was called the low-dose hypothesis, and it is entirely without scientific foundation. Third, perhaps the leading endocrine disruptor researcher was a professor from the University of Missouri called Fred Vomsall. Vomsall claimed his experiments on mice with supposedly endocrine disrupting chemicals validated the low-dose hypothesis. The problem with Vomsall's work, though, is that no independent research lab could replicate his claimed results, and replication results is a crucial part of the scientific method. So there you have it. The endocrine disruptor scare was launched with science fraud. It tried to overturn a basic principle of toxicology with laboratory results that no one could replicate. So much for Robert Kennedy and endocrine disruptors. Finally, I like and respect Tucker Carlson a lot, but several times over the past few years, he has fallen for the endocrine disruptor scam. I'd like to help him, but once bad ideas take hold of people, it can be difficult to talk them off the ledge. Stay up with the latest in junk science. Follow me on X at Junk Science and at my website, junkscience.com. Thanks for watching.